Hey everyone, welcome back. Uh, this week we are talking about technology society and the need for recreation. Um, I found this week uh, preparing these lectures to be really interesting for this reason. Uh, we tend to think of recreation as something frivolous or to be added on if we have time. Man, all of the research says you need to be thinking about this as a foundational part of your day-to-day -day life. Uh, it is it is not possible to have a fulfilling and happy life without recreation being central. Um, not necessarily taking the most time that you have uh, during the day, but being central to the way you think about how your day is going to proceed. It shouldn't be an afterthought. It should be something that you build your life around, um, which is going to sound either A, indulgent, because we were raised in this, uh, in this capitalist and um, really efficiency-focused society that makes it sound like if you're not being productive, you're wasting time, or B, a license to have the life that you want, which is how you should interpret all of this. All right. In this lecture, I want to cover two things. Um, first of all, what, why recreation is a need and not something that should be considered extra um, to be added into your life if possible. And two, how it used to be, uh, how that need used to be satisfied by our hunter-gatherer ancestors, um, which is which is going to be very interesting. All right, but let's start out with the need for recreation. So we've got five reasons that this is something, this is a need that you need to take seriously. Um, sociality, mental health, physical health, productivity, and creativity. So we'll go through each of them. Um, in terms of sociality, uh, the research suggests that recreation, taking recreation time, particularly with other people, um, reduces aggression and um, any sort of dominance-based behavior. Now, it's important to remember that uh, because we live in a in a society that is defined by and values competition, capitalism is based on competition, um, we have a tendency to corrupt some of our recreational activities with um, potentially too much competition. I mean, I've played in adult soccer leagues that are insane and like you get done with a game and it's, you don't feel rested or connected to people at all. But in an ideal situation, your recreation should, uh, should bind you together with people and it should reduce that need for um, dominance and, uh, and the ex exhibition of aggression. Probably part of the reason that we struggle with this, with the, um, meeting the need for this reason is um, that, we, that we live in a society of strangers. Uh, we evolved to be only around people that cared about us and that we cared about. And when I go out and play a game against you know, a bunch of other guys that I don't know. I obviously am less connected to those people. Um, so in terms of meeting this need for sociality, it's really important to, to um, do the best you can to be connected or find a way to feel connected to those other people. Okay. Um, second of all, mental health. It's not going to come as a huge surprise, but it is validating to realize you should take this seriously. Um, People who take time and value recreation uh, reduces depression, reduces anxiety, reduces stress, and bolsters self-esteem. Particularly if you are, if your recreation, uh, uh, there's a there's a caveat there. Um, sitting and watching six hours of Netflix is not going to bolster your self-esteem, but. Uh, engaging in recreational activities that involve a degree of creativity absolutely will. It'll be important for you to remember you've been raised in a society that values expertise and that shows you expertise all the time. So you have to be kind of willing to, um, you have to be willing to struggle and willing to be imperfect. Um, I highly recommend Jeff Tweedy. Uh, Jeff Tweedy's book, How to Write One Song, in which he talks about the fact that you don't have to be good at these things. You're, it's not 
That's not the reason to engage in them. The reason to engage in them is that they're nourishing to you. Um, so that's mental health. I, I mean, a little bit what you would expect, but also validating, I think, to hear that, yeah, there's research to back up that, that tendency we have to think, oh, yeah, taking time off is good for me. Um, it improves your physical health. Um, particularly, uh, again, if the recreation is is done in a way that is creative, that is social, ideally outdoors. Um, it reduces cortisol levels. Cortisol is a stress hormone. It reduces blood pressure and reduces your heart rate as well. And these are physical things that come from taking the time, building in time in your day for recreational activities. Um, this is not the reason that you should engage in it, but it does improve productivity when you get back to your schoolwork or your job. Um, you'll have renewed energy, um, renewed cognitive efficiency, and a more positive mood as well. Um, and finally, uh, and then it's not last for any particular reason, um, play in particular as a form of recreation is the foundation for imagination and creativity. Uh, when we evolved, we evolved to play and we found um, in playing reasons to be creative, reasons to use an imagination that was developing in our minds. So, uh, so recreation is the foundation for those things. To the extent that you can engage in recreational activities that involve some creativity, involve some imagination, it doesn't have to be writing songs, although that's a good thing to do, but problem solving. Um, if these problems are ones that you are choosing to do, um, that, you're, that you're in control of making the choice about it, that can be seen as a kind of play that will help with your creativity. Okay, that's a lot of positive reasons uh, to build recreation as a, a foundation in your day-to-day -day life. Okay, so how did our hunter-gatherer ancestors evolve to meet that need? Um, so there's a lot of interesting stuff here that uh, is that's challenging to make a part of your life around. But I want to give this to you because it's important for you to understand the machinery that you have here, this body, this mind, this is, it, it evolved to have a recreational life. So first of all, um, really even point zero, I guess. Um, I'm gonna put this in here just with a little asterisk. Work was play. Um, the best research that we have suggests that first of all, um, hunter-gatherers, we think of them we think of hunting and gathering in terms of the kind of work that we do, which is you get up and you have to go do this. The research suggests that, um, that many hunter-gatherer uh, societies did not expect people to get up and go to work to hunt and to gather. People woke up and they chose to go hunt or to gather. And if they didn't feel like it on a particular day, they didn't do it, and they were not punished for that, which is nuts when you think in terms of our ideologies about how we think about work. We think if you don't work, you don't deserve to have adequate food or adequate housing. That's not the way our hunter-gatherer ancestors conceived of what they were doing. They didn't, most of those societies didn't have a word for work that meant what we mean by work. They didn't think of it as toil. They thought of it as play. They were going to go out with their friends to go solve problems creatively. They could choose to do it or not. And when you think about it that way, if you think that you are earning, that you are getting food by playing at something, it kind of makes sense that it would be okay with you if some people chose not to play that day. Um, the people who brought home the most food in these societies were kind of the people who ended up enjoying that process the most. So point number kind of zero, work was play for them. There wasn't, 
there wasn't the same kind of need to not to have something different than work um, that we have. And we and we obviously have that. And I don't want to make it seem like you can go out and create some sort of completely play oriented job. Although it's worth thinking about, can you create a career? Can you find a career that would be intrinsically enjoyable to you? Um, I don't want to make it sound like being a sociology professor is is all like fun and games. I mean, I do these videos where I look like a dork and I have to write scripts and do research for it. But in terms of the friends that I have who have other jobs, this is a job that's creative. It allows me to have social experiences because I bounce ideas off of my uh, colleagues. I get to interact with you guys, although, you know, it's a little bit, it's mediated by email and stuff, but it still, it involves all of these elements that are, again, I don't want to make it sound like it's just a game, but it's, it's not drudgery. It's something that I enjoy doing. And a lot of people do their job because they need to make the money. Obviously, I need money, but I don't wake up thinking, oh, no, I have to go learn some cool information that I'm intrinsically interested in and then tell it to people so that I can hopefully help them find a path to a fulfilling life for themselves. That's like an intrinsically enjoyable activity. Um, okay. So if you can find work that is play, do that. If you can't, then these are the things that, I guess, the other things that hunter-gatherers um, had going for them in terms of recreation. First of all, their recreation interrupted work. They were out working. They didn't have to work continuously. They could stop at any time. They could take a break and go play. They could um, work. Work was not completely segmented from um, from play the way ours kind of is. Um, uh, and this was true, this is, this seems to be some, oh, I'm sorry, the second thing. Uh, they stopped when they had enough. Whereas you or I have to accomplish a certain amount of hours or grade a certain number of papers or whatever it is. For them, once they had enough food, they just stopped for the day. And this, this is the thing that seems to be intrinsic to our species. When we went from an agrarian society to an industrial society in the 1800s, um, the, the people who had created, who were creating these industrial organizations, they needed to get workers and they needed to get these workers to do a lot of work for them. A capitalist makes money by getting other people to do the work. The problem was the workers were like, well, I made enough money to be able to go buy my food, right? And the owners or the managers would say, yeah, but you have to work more. And they would say, why? I already, I, I made enough. I'm going to be done for the day. I would rather have the free time than more money. Um, so that seems to be something in us um, that has to be, we have to be taught to not want that to not value recreation, to value working hard to make more money. Um, we've learned that pretty well, but that seems to be something that, uh, it seems to be something in our species that we would rather get done, we'd rather just get enough and then be able to play for the rest of the time. Okay, um, so their recreation, they were able to interrupt their work whenever they wanted to. Um, their recreation was collective, uh, which again makes sense. You're with your family and your best friends all the time. If you were going to have recreational time after you got done hunting and gathering as much as you wanted to, you would go and hang out. It wasn't that you had to be involved in every game or every song or whatever, but you were there with these people who cared about you and you cared about. And that's a nourishing situation to be in. Um, I want to fast forward to the next video really quickly to just th make you think about, um, you've probably had the experience of coming home to your apartment, being by yourself, turning on the TV or turning on Netflix or checking Instagram or whatever, and you are seeing other people, right? I mean, that's like, that's what we're watching, but you're not connected. These people don't care about you and it's not nourishing in the same way. You can end up scrolling through Instagram or 
like binge watching something on Netflix and end up feeling really, really lonely. Um, that was not the case for our ancestors. That's not what we evolved to experience. Okay. Specifically, now we get down to uh, what, <laughs> what recreation was like for our species. Um, it comes down to basically these five categories. Music and dance, arts and crafts, story time, which is both um, both making up stories and listening to stories, um, playing games, and then just visiting and gossiping with people. If you think about it, there's no technology other than, um, I mean, there's technology for hunting and technology for gathering in terms of making bows and arrows, um, making baskets, uh, and then, of course, the campfire. But otherwise, I mean, think about you going out camping um, and think about you don't have your phone. That's the situation you're in. Um, and we will come back to this in the conclusion. That can be really disorienting and difficult. But once you fight through that, once you accommodate yourself to that situation, what you have is people to connect with and, um, and the natural world to connect with as well. Okay. Um, ooh, it's a little bit long. Sorry about the length of the video. Um, what we're going to do in the next one is we're going to look at how we attempt to meet this need. We're going to kind of look at how technology mediates these activities for us. And it will be kind of depressing. I'll see you then.